Hey party people, it's Nick with Technic, and today we're looking at a phone so rugged My hair follicles run deeper than the roots of a sequoia So beefy I got a house on the cape, maybe you come visit A beast of a phone <laughs> Are you saying what Nick, this thing's like super powerful and crazy new and futuristic? Well some of it This thing is billed as being a heavy duty indestructible device And we're gonna find out if it lives up to the name The Tank 2 in this episode of Technic It is already opened, but that's okay because we packaged it up like pretty much like an unboxing. The main thing here was not to, un to necessarily worry so much about the unboxing of this device, though I will show you what's in here. It comes with the charge cable, power brick. That's always nice to see in a phone nowadays, right? And then this huge, looks like guitar pick. Do you think maybe he's compensating for something? That's actually used for popping open the SIM tray and all that. Now, while I power this up and turn this on, I do want to say, we've already played with this just a little bit. Ew, David! So let me just say right out of the gate, if you're looking for a 5G device, this is not it. This is 4G LTE. This is more considered an outdoors, like a survival phone. I know that sounds crazy, but this is a real thing, a survival phone. And that's what we're going to check out are some of the features on this phone. So now, 4G speeds, all right, we already know. That's kind of a given, right? But if you look at the size of this phone, and, and we'll put the how much this phone weighs, like right here, um, it is not small. This thing essentially is heavier than any power brick I've ever seen. And before you say too much, that's the reason why. This thing comes with 15 and a half thousand milliamp hours. That's crazy. We're talking five times or more of what most phones out there have. This battery is meant to make this device run for days and days without a charge. If it's in standby mode, you can probably run this thing for a week before it needs a charge. So as far as being a survival phone, if you were to take this thing into the great outdoors um, and have it as an emergency device with, a, with some power built in here and some, some of the other features we're gonna show, um, it's definitely going to go the distance. It also has some very modern stuff on here. So like right now it's assessing, it's doing fingerprint logging. You can unlock this with your face as well. We're gonna skip those for now. I will tell you I used the fingerprint unlock. It's not the fastest that's out there, but there was nothing that inhibited the use. Um, face tracking I did not use. So I, a couple of things worth pointing out here. Th so this phone has 12 gigs of RAM, all right? sufficient for pretty much anything that you're going to need and built in 256 gigs of storage on this device. Also, some of that extra power is there because of some of these extra features. Now, this is a 6.79 inch display running an octa-core CPU, okay? Feel good. Bluetooth and all that stuff we've got on here, NFC, GPS, all of those good things. It is IP68 for water and dust resistance. And then when you get to the camera, uh, I feel like that's the part where it benefits from a very strong camera physical hardware spec, but the software behind the camera is very much lacking. So this thing's rocking 108 megapixel with a 32 megapixel secondary camera and a 64 megapixel um, camera. This thing also has a 16 megapixel wide angle lens and it does have a form of night um, vision for that 64 megapixel lens. So again, this thing is kind of designed to be an outdoor device. All right. So Technic, what do you mean by that when you say that? Well, let's, let's save what I think is the coolest and most innovative part of this phone for last. So let's first go to, we have all the plethora of Android and I, I guess that's worth saying, I guess we all assumed you assumed, uh, that this is an Android device. Now, I can go down here and go to the toolbox. And in the toolbox is where this gets interesting. Um, I have in here a compass. I've got a flashlight. And when I say flashlight, all phones, obviously, I can turn on a flashlight like that right there. This has a standard flashlight on it. Let me do them that way. So they're very comparable if you just turn on the standard flashlight in the Android settings. Okay, but here's what happens if I'm in this toolbox and I go to my camping lamp. Okay, now warning, do not point this at people's eyes. That's literally the warning on this thing. I'm gonna start off with the, with the lowest setting, okay? And I'm gonna do it that way, 
I'm gonna try not to, does that pick up on the camera up there? Oh yeah. We're gonna go to half brightness. And I don't even know, I might be washed out of this shot. And then, if that wasn't insane enough, there is full bright mode. Now, at this point, what you're gonna see here. Sorry, Jesus, that's bright. What you're gonna, John's slapping the camera around back there, he's blinded. Um, that is full bright. Now here's the thing, when I turn this off of full bright, the phone itself will not allow me to go back to bright mode for 10 minutes. That's because it's possibly overheating this device to a place that's dangerous. It's that's, your eyes a that's not, a that is not a joke. Now, here are some other things that are in this uh, survival flashlight. I can hit SOS and that actually Morse code flashes an SOS for help. So if I'm out in the woods hiking, I can hit this and planes, helicopters, or people passing by would be able to see that. And if they know Morse code, which I don't, what are there like 12 of you out there? That's true, but he shouldn't say it. Um, hopefully one of those people sees that. And then this in, is the last thing I wanna highlight in the flashlight function of this phone. It's called the explosion flash. Now this is meant to be tactical. So what this is is uh, intruder or I'm out and there's an animal attack this is meant to ward that off and give you some cover behind this I'm not gonna point this directly at the camera so God. And, you know you can just envision John Wick behind this with uh, a nerf blaster um, really just having a good good time <laughs> Puppies. so that is uh, just the flashlight function of this phone now it has a bubble level and we can like we can level things using the actual device. It measures height from the floor to things. You can hang pictures. It obviously, it has an alarm. It counts steps with a pedometer. Has a plumb bob, a protractor. It measures barometric pressure. Um, it can be used as a speedometer for while you're going down the road. Now, because it is IP68 water resistant, um, it actually has an underwater camera mode that allows you to take pictures that are the software kind of tries to adjust for an underwater shot now this also has a noise siren that it can do on here um and it'll measure decibels while you are doing what you're doing wait so this one see how loud you really are yeah yeah it's all built into the That's tank too my friend now the, the other I couple of things i want to mention here as far as browsing and snappiness of the phone i felt like it was responsive i used this for about two weeks as a daily driver the weight of this phone um, I started being one-sided. I was getting these, as you can tell, these uh, ripped uh, bicep over here, and then the the, the non-cell phone hand was looking like Mr. Burns. Josh. But this one is the one on here, John, that I'm a little, I'm kind of just dumbfounded by. This is called a warning simulator. Now, what this is meant to be is if you're pulled over on the side of the road, say with a flat tire, that you can turn this on and it'll keep people from just driving into the rear end of your vehicle. However, um, I would have to think and warn against having this on at all in a moving car, and in just a second you'll see why. Yeah. So, a little surprised that this is even on a phone, I just honestly, but Will it serve a purpose? Please, open up! I don't know, maybe, but again, do not have that on while you're driving down the road. So those are kind of the built-ins on this that are really the most impressive. Otherwise, what we're looking at is a extremely uh, large battery on an Android phone, running Android 13, um, that's just gonna go for days. I mean. The, the functionality of the phone is fine. I didn't think there was anything else except this. And this is the thing that you're just going to have to take my word on. I'm going to try to show you. It's probably not going to film very well in this space. But this big button right here, when I hit this, it actually turns this front module of the phone on and becomes a projector. Yes, a projector. So this phone, I can then broadcast whatever is on my phone um, I can actually display out into any space. And let's see if it'll, oh, if it'll show up on here. Um, again, I wasn't, this isn't really the way to do, do this. Do you want me to but, kill the lights? Uh, yeah, um, here, I'll, we'll shoot it down in this little box here. And so in a fully lit room, I don't know that that's gonna give you what you need. John, is that, 
giving it, you it's picking up on camera that is the screen cast essentially of the phone now that allows you whatever you're doing on this phone to then project it against a wall john you want to see if that camera over there i mean oh, does wow. that give you enough of Dude, a that's crazy i mean th and this is still even without this the studio lights the ambient light why are you saying it like that the ambient light i'm not gonna get sucked into this the ambient light in this room is actually very bright i mean i'm, I'm what six foot away from the wall uh, like five it's definitely legible it's visible um it has some auto focus feature i mean i guess it stays kind of relatively yeah, focused that's weird. you can too. see it like auto focusing yeah so you have the option to actually have a projector uh, for whatever you brought out with you, um, camping, video games, or playing videos right off of that, if you save movies onto this, that's kind of a cool thing. And it does more than that, guys. I mean, this is meant to be kind of a quick glance at this. This is kind of what I enjoyed about the phone after two weeks of use, okay? I found it a little taxing for the amount of weight that the phone was, but it was an amazing thing to have a phone that I was not constantly reaching for a charger. And to be fair, if this was 5G, I probably would have kept using this a little while longer. So that weight overall did not deter me. Um, guys, we'll try to throw in any other little information we might have on this phone in case you're interested in looking at one. This one, uh, roughly at the time when this was sent to us, was around $600 on Amazon. This is the Tank 2. This is model 8849. If you're looking for this thing and guys if you've seen this or you have any questions about it reach out to us and let us know what you think or what you want to know so guys that has been the tank 2 i'm nick with technic thanks for stopping by i'll see you next time